When you're born, you are put in charge of the single greatest thing in all of existence, a human body. And uh, there's no owner's manual. Right? So it's all sort of learned by osmosis, sort of rubbing up against the thing. And sadly, um, too many of the children of the world today come from parents who never got that education done very well in the first place. Unlike my father, who was 90, who lived on the farm, and they, you know, if you lived on a farm, you learned about things that were good for you and things that weren't. And, and I think because of that, he is 90 and still fully functional and strong and vigorous. But what did they eat? They ate great foods. They grew just about everything that they ate. And what they didn't grow and eat, the guy next door or downtown, the baker, the butcher, the whoever it was, that was the local community of food providers did that. And it was a very healthful place to be. There were a lot of other things going on that uh, made life dangerous, like contaminated water and infectious diseases and so on and so forth. But the food thing was doing pretty well. As we worked to get rid of the contaminated water and the infectious diseases, we messed up the food supply. Okay. That's me, quickly, <laughs> just in case you don't, I don't look like me. <laughs> um, uh, that slide is just for me to remind myself to tell you a little bit about my story. I actually joined Jerry Brassfield and GNLD in 1968. I was a college student. I had been actually grown up in Silicon Valley, gone to school there, became an engineer, worked at NASA on guidance control systems and flight simulators uh, at Moffett Field. We did a really great job getting the Apollo Moon Project done, so as a reward I was drafted. <laughs> Okay, it's a true story. And I went into the Army and I eventually convinced them to let me go, please. And they let me go. I went back to school. And while I was in school, I got a job working in a factory that Jerry owned um, as the graveyard janitor. So I would go to school during the day and then I would work in the factory at night. And I would eat the rest of the time and get no sleep. To make a long story short, I graduated eventually studying chemistry and was offered a job in the factory and went from the janitor, the graveyard janitor, to the uh, production manager, to the purchasing manager, <laughs> to the plant manager, and on up the line. And uh, 45 years later, here I am. So I have been through the product side of this thing from the very, very bottom with the broom looking around saying, what is this junk on the floor? And why are they so messy, right? All the way up to saying, let's not get any junk on the floor and let's not be messy. <laughs> in addition to my company persona, I have a family persona. I have, um, I am the son of parents. Ah, <laughs> how's that for logic? And uh, sadly, my mom died a, a, quite a few years ago of a heart disease, and, but my dad is 90 and still going strong. Awesome. Um, I can tell you why that happened. My dad grew up on the farm. My mom grew up in the city. My dad grew up on a farm in a time of plenty. My mom grew up in a city in England during the Great Depression where sometimes a potato was what you had for dinner. And that compromised her underlying biochemistry for the rest of her life. Wow. So whereas my dad was healthy as a horse and could still pull a plow, I think, you know, she struggled with that because at a time in her life for a prolonged period of time, her biochemistry was compromised. She couldn't build the strength and vigor and vitality. So when I talk to you about this idea of balance and the importance of nutrition, I talk from a very personal perspective because I saw that in my parents, one who grew up close to the land, who is amazingly vigorous and strong and cognitively alert, and one who grew up away from that in an area of near starvation at times, who always fought battles throughout her life in one form or another and eventually gave up to that battle in her late 60s, which is very young, very young. So uh, that's a little personal thing. I also have one wife, two children, and five grandchildren, and uh, they are the smartest, happiest, brightest grandchildren you'll ever meet in your whole life. <laughs> and every morning when they get up, when they come to our house in particular, but when they're in their own homes, they get up, they have their breakfast, and they go to our little green supplement boxes, and they pop them open, and they take out their own specific group of supplements that they consume every day. 
It's something that they've been trained on since there, <laughs> right? When they were first born. I'll give you a quick little testimonial. When my two of my grandsons were first born, both of them were diagnosed with asthma. But I thought that didn't make any sense. How can they come out a mom and have asthma? So what we found is that they had a, a, a lung sensitivity to breathing that was directly related to the content of certain nutrients in their diet. So we put them on Liquivite right away in their little bottles and so on and started feeding them Liquivite. And shortly after that, those symptoms of neonatal asthma, as they call it, newborn asthma, were gone. And they are not asthmatic today. One's 17, one's 14, 15. He was 15 last week, actually. And he'd be very upset if I still called him 14. <laughs> and they have never had that before. And it was because the, all their bodies needed was the basic bio, biochemistry to deal with this insult called breathing. Right? You're taking in oxygen, a highly reactive molecule. Right? Oxidation gets its name from that. And if your body's not prepared for it, it can cause problems. But when it is, it is the basis of life. One of the things that makes this company stand out above and beyond all others out there is this slide you see up there right now, based in nature, backed by science. When we say nature, though, we don't mean just natural. A lot of companies out there got stuff that's natural. doesn't mean it belongs in your body. If in theory, everything on the planet is natural, okay? meaning that it's here naturally. There's a lot of man-made junk, but a lot of natural stuff has no place in your body. What we mean is human natural, things that are natural for humans, the whole food, human food chain sort of thing when it comes to nutrition. So when we say natural, we don't mean just natural, any sort of natural, we mean human natural. We also mean, when we say backed by science, we mean real science from real scientists. You know, our scientific advisory board was founded around one of the great scientists of all times, one of the most preeminent scientists of the last century, Dr. Arthur First. I always used to tell people, if you got everybody together of Dr. First's cap caliber and capabilities, and sat them down for lunch, you could sit them at a table for four. Of all of the scientists that did all of this work over all of those years, Dr. First is credited with some of the great discoveries, chemotherapy and things like that. When he transitioned to the idea, rather than treating cancers and other diseases, to preventing them, is when he came to GNLD and changed the way we do things. And ever since then, we have been guided by this idea that given the right things, the body has the capacity to protect itself from just about everything. Even a bullet if you're fast enough to get out of the way. <laughs> Along the way, we had developed this reputation for good science and had an opportunity to have these sorts of folks as research partners. U.S. Department of Agriculture, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and on. I won't read the list. Those of you who know the company know the list. I just remind you that you can't buy your way into this group. You have to earn your way into this group. You know, the USDA makes any sort of research budget we might have look like pennies. Okay, same with the CDC. The reason that we got involved with them is from doing work, high quality science from years, they actually approached us and asked us to uh, work with them on a few projects. All of that work resulted in a bunch of things that other companies wish they had, and that is peer review publication, proof that their products work. This puts you, the distributor, in a very powerful position because you don't have to say, you know, trust me, they work. <laughs> okay, believe me, they work. You can say, look, it's right here in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition or the Journal of the American College of Nutrition or any one of these other journals. I'll talk more about that in a little while just so you can get a full grasp of what that means. But it's a very powerful position to be in they don't have to take your word for it. They can take the word of some of the leading researchers in the world. The result of all this is life-changing products. You all know that. I know that. Uh, there's a bunch of people out there that need to know that because their lives need to be changed. Okay, they are clinging to health. Some of them not very uh, tenaciously, you know, falling off all the time, getting further and further into what we call metabolic debt, trying to deal with the life that they're confronted with. So um, all of this work, this commitment to nature, human nature, human natural, and backed up with science, but not just any science, solid science from real scientists working with the best scientific institutions in the world published in the most respected peer-reviewed journals in the world, really separate our company from others.